Hey, hey, welcome to Your Pretty Pennies with Tyra Jones. I'm Tyra Jones, your financial success coach. And we are in the middle of Summertime Fine Finances Summer Series, um, where we're talking about how to make our money look as cute and as pretty and as fine as we are, right? So we left off, right now we're on day five. So if this is your first time joining us, welcome and definitely watch day one, two through four because we're on day five now and we're going to be talking about savings. But we've already went through completing your goal statement. So one of the, um, the things that we're doing for the financial challenge is making sure that we set a goal um, that's attainable be, be through August 31st, 2018. So go back to that video. I talk about how to set a compelling goal, an attainable goal. And then we talked about how to increase your money flow so you can achieve this goal by August 31st, 2018. We talked about how to manage your money on a monthly basis using a monthly budget, zero-based budget. And then the last time, we uh, for day four, we talked about five things to do with your your paycheck with your money every time you get paid five things that you need to do that's going to help you not only achieve your goals but to set yourself up for financial success all right so today we're going to be talking about um the three components or the three things the three types of savings that you need um so you can set yourself up for financial success um and i'm going to go through like three different levels for you as well and this is the method that i use to become debt free and the method that i use to keep my savings at or above ten thousand and then also have some advanced savings which is um like retirement planning, college planning for for tearing and things like that. All right. So number one, let's get into the three types of savings. So there's three types of savings that you should be, or there's three types of expenses, I should say, that you should be saving for. All right. So there's emergency expenses or like unplanned expenses, things that you didn't know was going to come up. There's planned expenses. So vacation trip if you pay taxes every year down payment on a new home so you're saving for that um and putting seed money for your business or to grow your business things like that that's stuff that you're planning for unplanned expenses are like if your car breaks down and you need to buy a new radiator like i did i needed to do three days ago and then get paid get paid to put in and all that if you have dental work that needs to get done, emergency room visit, those are things that are unplanned, things that you are not planning to spend your income and your cash flow on, so you have money set aside for that. Planned expenses is money set aside, like I said, for vacation trip, for taxes, down payment on a new home, if you're upgrading your car, putting money to the side for that. The third thing is investments right for retirement for college planning for getting into the stock market and getting compound interest going in your um in your favor so those are three types of things that we need to start thinking about in order to save for unplanned expenses planned expenses and investments all right now oftentimes people don't think of investments as savings but they really are hi melissa thank you for joining hey sierra thank you for joining make sure you guys share this and if you're watching the replay share this out as well and you can tap the screen to give hearts and to give thumbs up and things like that i like seeing those um but yeah, oftentimes people don't include investing in their saving strategy because they think that's is something separate. But investing is actually just an advanced and long-term form of savings, right? So when you put money in the stock market or in your mutual funds and your retirement plan and college planning, it's a savings account that earns interest because the bank or whatever financial institution that you invested in is basically paying you to set money there, right? So that is a long-term savings um, account to where if you don't let it sit for a long term, you don't make any money off of it, right? So yes, you do make money off of that money. So it is an investment, but it's also savings because you're leaving it, you're letting it sit there. You're not using it. All right. Hey, Sierra. Good seeing you. Um, so let's talk about the three levels there is to the saving strategy that I promote and that I teach my clients in my one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. Number one is level one and is $2,000 in a standard savings account and contributing about 5% to retirement. So 
the reason why this is level one is because this is like basic. Everybody should be doing this no matter where you are financially. Everybody should, number one, keep $2,000 at least in your savings account and label it abundance or overflow. I know, um, what about an online savings account with a higher APY? That can be, that is still considered savings, right? So if you want to message me one-on-one, -on -one, we could talk more and more about like the saving strategy and what type of vehicles you want to put your money in, things like that. That I do. I don't do coaching like that online because it differs from person to person, but that is still considered your savings. It's considered savings. It should be included in your saving strategy, right? All right. Um, so level one, basic $2,000 in a savings account and label it abundance or overflow account. Oftentimes I see people saying emergency fund and I even used to say that I, I am guilty of used to saying like, oh, that's my emergency fund savings account or this is for emergencies. Well, you get what you expect, right? So I started labeling my oh oh formerly emergency fund savings account as my abundance account because that's my overflow for if something happens, anything happens that's unplanned or unexpected, I have overflow to take care of it so it doesn't knock me off my game and off my financial plan if I've already allocated everything in my monthly budget, right? So for example, if you get paid, if you get, if you've already budgeted for the month of July and something happens tomorrow, that can throw off your financial plan and your monthly budget by needing to use some income that you were going to pay on another bill or that you were going to pay on some debt to to fix your car. So always have money in your abundance or overflow account, which is a standard savings account, $2,000 or a little bit more than that. So where you can always address any fin unexpected financial emergencies that come up. All right. And then I said to put 5% into a, um, overflow funds yes Melissa right and then that, you get what you what you expect so not only do you have overflow to uh to address something else but if I label that thing overflow I'm attracting more overflow so send me some coins send me some money get more financial blessings get more overflow supernatural abundance like send it my way right so that's why I label it overflow now I have one that says an abundance account and one that says an overflow account and I just love every time I look at this Every time I log into my online banking, it just makes me happy. It just makes me smile. Like, I love those words. Um, so paired with that, it's going to be 5% into your retirement account. And 5% is on the low end. But if you are just starting out, if you don't have much income or you don't have much money in the bank, everybody can afford to put away 5%. You will not miss it, right? So if you are not contributing at least 5%, Head to your uh, online banking. It sh you should be able to do it online. Or you can do it through your HR department and increase your retirement contribution to 5%. And the reason why this is so important because everybody gets old. Everybody is going to have a life after uh, working a 9 to 5 or working their business or building their business. Everybody is going to have a later life. And you're going to want to maintain the lifestyle that you're creating. And so what you're doing by putting $2,000 in the bank now in a savings account is you're securing your short cert, uh, like you know promoting the security of short term right but then you're putting a little bit away to secure your financial situation long term so you're doing both all right so that is a good saving strategy to do both put a little bit for the short term put a little bit for the long term so that's level one level two is fully funded savings account and adding 10% 10 to 15% to your retirement account. Again, we're going to put even more. That's level two. So once you start increasing your income, increasing that money flow, you've already achieved $2,000 in the bank. You're going to go to the next level of your saving strategy. So this is level two. So if you didn't have, if you don't have $2,000 in the bank and not contributing 5% comfortably, then that's what you need to be focusing on now. If you already have that and saying, okay, I need to go to the next level. What's level two? Level two is 10k in the bank and 10 to 15% into retirement. 
all right? Like I just said, we're putting some away for now, some away for later. And these, this, this 10K in the bank will help you not only cover, you know, small financial situations, but also planned expenses, like your vacation that you're going on in the winter, or, you know, gifts for the winter, you know, during Christmas time, or birthdays that are coming up. Um, <clears throat> what else do I have? If you want to uh, save for a down payment on a home, that should be going into another savings account. And like, like Melissa said, with the higher APY, so you can do a money market account and save 10000 in the bank. All right. So you have your, your abundance account that has two grand and then you have your overflow account that has 10 grand and your abundance account takes care of any small financial emergencies that you weren't expecting that you can easily replenish. Just, you know, save up some money and put it right back in there. And then 10 K in the bank. Don't you, uh, uh, Melissa, for my replay viewers, I'm sorry that I keep stopping, but I'm gonna get Melissa together right quick. Um, first of all, you know for you she's one of my clients she know that is very doable for her so we ain't gonna go there second of all we serve an abundant god ten thousand dollars is not a lot for anyone who is watching me and you feel like it is virtually impossible for me to save ten thousand dollars in the bank and leave it there right we're putting two thousand dollars in the bank we're leaving it there ten thousand dollars in the bank and we're leaving it there i want you to start expanding your money mindset you have to start increasing your money mindset. $10,000 in the bank is not a lot of money, right? You can blow $10,000. Let me tell you how you could quickly blow $10,000 in six months. You can upgrade your car, put $5,000 plus trade in your car and upgrade your car. And then you can have a root canal that needs to be done. That's $2,000. And then you can go on a girl's trip and that's $1,000. So all right, that's five, six, seven, eight. And then um, you want to take the financial reset online academy because you want to start investing in yourself and in your finances that's five hundred dollars that's 497 all right so then somebody wants to borrow some money and you're like okay that's fine i'm gonna let them borrow five hundred dollars all right so now you got a thousand dollars well next you know in the next couple of months something else needs to be replaced on your car so then there's another thousand dollars that you got to pay the auto shop you didn't, you didn't handle both unexpected expenses and expected expenses. $10,000 is not a lot of money. So if you are watching this and you're like, 10 k in the bank. Oh, well, I can't let that sit. I'm going to burn a hole. I ain't that good. We're going to watch our words. That's Is that one? I'm coming, oh, no. We talked about that in the um, expanding and um, increasing our money flow. We need to watch our words. We need to watch our thoughts. It is not sweat on the brow to save 10K, right? It's time to go to the next level. If you are attached to me, if you are attached to the YPP community, it is time to go to the next level. It is not for, uh, it is no coincidence that you have found me. It is no coincidence that you are listening to me on these internet streets, right? You are expanding your money mindset. We are expanding what we want, what we require, what is our baseline, what, what our needs are, what our wants are. And so the baseline for our savings account should be 10k all right it won't happen tomorrow it'll take a couple of months maybe even a year to save ten thousand dollars but that's the goal and we're going to work the goal until it happens right so saving strategy number or level two for our saving strategy is going to be 10k in the bank and then contributing 15 at least 10 to 15 percent to your retirement account you don't need more than 50 percent all right because we have other stuff to do with our money. And if you don't know what else to do with your money besides savings and investing and things like that, watch the five things to do with the dollar, which I believe was day four. Day four, the last one. Day four of this summer series. All right? So then level three. Level three. So for my ladies who was like, all right, I already got money in the bank. I already contributed to 15% in my uh, retirement account. Level three is going to be investing in yourself and or investing in another uh, investment vehicle. So, one thing that I wanna talk about is the fact that it is not okay. It is not okay. It is not okay to only have one stream of income in 2018 and beyond. If you aren't noticing the way the world is going, technology and robots and computers are starting to replace middle class jobs. 
Like it, they're starting to get replaced. Like pretty soon, the job that you can do, project management job or that IT position that makes forty to sixty thousand or whatever, is going to get replaced. You're going to need more than one income, and you're going to make need to make sure that you are so valuable to the marketplace that you yourself can never be replaced by technology, by robot, by computer system, by you know a software app, whatever it is. You need to make sure you are so valuable and marketable and needed that you can never be replaced. Right, that you always have money coming in because you always have something valuable to give to someone else to the marketplace. So therefore, whether your purpose, your God-given purpose is to get VP of a hospital or VP of a job and work your way up the corporate ladder or if it's to build your business, I think everybody should be consultant. Everybody should monetize the gifts that they, that they um, or not the gifts, the skills that they uh, have learned in college, in um, post-college degrees, and in their career fields, they should always be monetizing that on the side of their nine to five. As I'm a firm believer in that. So you need to start putting money to the sides for seed money to invest in a business, invest into your coaching or consulting practice, investing in that shea butter um, company that you're launching, investing in whatever it is, investing in yourself so you can get to the next level. If you need another certification, if you need to get some conferences under your belt, if you need to get something under your belt that takes you to the next level, that makes you more marketable, that makes you more promotable, right? Some leadership uh, conferences. If you need to get in management conferences, things like that, you need to start creating multiple streams of income and increasing the level in which you are showing up at in your workplace if you are a nine to fiver. It is no longer, uh, maybe I will, maybe I won't. You're going to need to, because in the next five to 10 years, the, the world is going to be different. And there's only going to be two types of, of, of income levels. There's going to be low income or high income. The middle class is being depleted, right? So that is why the saving strategy for number three, if you already have 10K in the bank, if you already contributing 10 to 15% of your income, investing in other investment vehicles, so therefore the stock market, mutual funds, things like that, and you can hire a CPA or a certified uh, a CFP, not a CPA. A CPA is a public accounting. A CFP is a certified financial planner. Talk to talk to one, reach out to some, get some recommendations for a certified financial planner from fans and family that's in your, your area that you're connected to and say, hey, do you know anybody who does financial planning, who, who does investment advice? I do not. That is not what I do. So if you want to message me, you can message me about financial coaching or how to set your finances up, set your financial plan up. But I do not do investment advising. All right. At least not at this point. Um, and you can hire a certified financial planner and they can tell you, you can tell them your financial goals, what you want to do in the next couple of years, in the next 10 years, what your family is looking for. And you can get into college planning for your, like saving for college, saving for your children's businesses. You can do a custodial brokerage account where it can go to college or that money, you know, that you're saving in an investment account can go towards their business if they want to be an entrepreneur right after high school. Um, retirement plan. So your Roth IRA. You can do um, other investments like so cryptocurrency, stock market, things like that. Hire a financial planner and they can definitely help you explore your options. All right. But you have to. Oh, and aside of that, investing in stock market, invest in yourself. Invest in increasing your marketability, your value in your workplace, and or increasing your business revenue, increasing the income, scaling your business, growing your business, starting your business, launching your business. All right. So those are the three things that you need to be focused on. Get from tier one to tier two and tier two to tier three. All right. So identify where you are. Start working on it. If you're on level one, you need to have 2K in the bank and contributing 5% five, five, five to your retirement account. If you are at level two, you need to be at 10K in the bank and then contributing 10 to 15% into your retirement. Level three is working on building more streams of income, working on increasing the amount of income you have coming in if you work as in a nine to five, if you work in corporate. And then if you are a business owner, increasing scaling your business, investing your money, saving your money and investing back into your business and if you do not have a business and you're ready to start one and you're at level three you need to start saving your coins so you can launch 
all right? So you can become irreplaceable, all right? I'll talk to you guys later. Day six is going to be all about, which, what is it? Saving for retirement. And then day seven is going to be saving for business. Those two things I'm going in depth with. So definitely tune in to day five and day six next week. All right, you guys, take care. Bye-bye.